Welcome to Electron Online, and now let's take a look at the Moon's synchronous orbit. And what do we mean by that? Well, it turns out if we go far back in history, let's say 4 billion years or so, not long after the Moon was formed, and the Moon was formed most likely through a giant collision of a big object with the Earth, it took off a piece of the Earth, all that debris went off into space because of the gravitational attraction of the Earth, it stayed close enough to the Earth, it coalesced into a sphere, and it began to revolve around the Earth, and that became our Moon. Well, it turns out that the Moon would also be rotating on its axis, and the speed at which it rotated on its axis would have been greater than the time it would take for the Moon to make, take one trip around the Earth. So you see those little arrows here? They represent a particular point on the Moon, the surface of the Moon, and notice as the Moon and the orbit of the Moon will be in this direction like so, you can see that as the Moon uh, takes its trip around the Earth, the Moon rotates faster, and so that same point on the Moon will then, of course, keep going around and around and around as the Moon is rotating or revolving around the Earth. So you can see the same part of the Moon is not always visible. Here the front side of the Moon is visible, and then over here the back side of the Moon, back to the front side of the Moon, back to the back side of the Moon, and so forth as it goes around. Today it doesn't do that anymore. Today the, the uh, rotational rate of the Moon is exactly in sync, and that's why they call it synchronous orbit. The rotation of the Moon is exactly in sync with the time that it takes for the Moon to make one trip around the Earth. So here again, that's the same portion of the Moon facing the Earth, but as the Moon is slowly revolving around the Earth, you can see that the same phase of the Moon is always pointing towards the Earth, so we can never see the backside of the Moon, at least not from the Earth. To see the backside of the Moon, we have to go and travel with a space rocket to the other side, take pictures of it, or some people actually saw it for real. Uh, because they actually traveled to the Moon and flew around the Moon and could see the back side of the Moon. It actually looks very different than the front side of the Moon. Anyway, so why did this happen? Why is the Moon currently in synchronous orbit when it wasn't like that before? Well, it turns out we have such thing what we call tidal forces. There's a very strong gravitational attraction between the Earth and the Moon. And so what that means is because the gravitational attraction of the Earth on the Moon, it tends to take the Moon, and instead of it being in a spherical shape, it tends to pull it into kind of an egg shape. This is very much exaggerated, of course, but just to illustrate, it gets pulled in that direction. And since the Moon rotates faster than it orbits around the, the Earth, you can see that the way the Moon is being stretched out is always in a different direction. So as the Moon is turning, the the direction of stretch, because the tidal forces are, is always going to be different, which means that the Moon is constantly stretched in different directions. So stretched and pushed and stretched and pushed and stretched and pushed as it rotates around the Earth, and that causes a lot of frictional forces inside the Moon and it heats up the interior of the Moon. And because of those frictional forces, it actually takes energy out of the Moon's motion. And where does that come from? Well, it's the rotational motion of the Moon begins to slow down because the rotational motion of the Moon is called kinetic energy and because the tidal forces and the tidal friction uh, or the friction caused by the tidal forces slowly reduces that kinetic energy and slows down the Moon, slows down the Moon until the Moon is exactly in sync, the Moon's rotation is exactly in sync with the Moon's orbit. In this way, the Moon still being oblong shape like this, of course, not as severe as I've drawn there, but you can see that this oblong shape, that egg shape, will always be pointing in the same direction towards the Earth, and therefore it's no longer rotating. So now what, what's happened is that frictional force has taken away all that kinetic energy, and now the Moon just very slowly rotates on its axis at the same rate as it takes for it to go around the Moon once. So when the Moon takes one trip around the Earth, the Moon has turned exactly one time around its own axis, causing the same phase of the Moon always to be pointing to the Earth. Now, what, what happened to the Moon is also, no, also happening to the Earth, but much more slowly beca because the Earth is so much bigger, and because it's so much bigger, it has much more kinetic energy as it's turning around in its axis. So, the Earth is still experiencing the same thing because of the gravitational attraction of the Moon. The Earth is being stretched in the direction of the Moon, and because the Earth is turning every 24 hours, the Earth will be stretched in a different direction all the time throughout every day, and that's what's causing the tides. That's why we call those tidal forces. It pulls so much on the oceans that the oceans rise in the direction of where the Moon is at, and then lower in the direction where the Moon is not at. Not only the oceans rise like that, but also the land. The lands get lifted about three feet, or about one meter, 
away from where it normally is when the moon is right above and when the moon then moves to the other side of course it does that because the earth is turning then the land settles back in so the earth is still being stretched and squeezed and stretched and squeezed and stretched and squeezed so much so that about four billion years ago one earth day was about six hours in length can you imagine three hours a daytime three hours a nighttime the days would go really fast and wouldn't they well, today that has slowed down because of those tidal forces to an Earth day being about 24 hours. And guess what? If you still don't think that 24 hours is enough, stick around. In about 500 million years, that will have become about 26 hours because this will just continue until eventually the Earth will simply be in sync, just like the Moon, with the Moon's orbit around the Earth. Of course, that will take many, many, many more billions of years, and I'm sure that that's not going to be one of our worries. But yes, Long enough in the future, the days will become get, will get longer because that tide, those tidal forces will continue to slow down the rotation of the Earth. So that's why the Moon already is in synchronous orbit around the Earth, and eventually, give it so many more billions of years, the Earth will be in sync with the uh, trip of the Moon around the Earth as well. That's what we call synchronous orbit.